Zeno did not like the blue lamp as much as I thought he would. He likes the ambers and the oranges. I think he wouldn't have minded the blue if it wasn't iridized, but that didn't do it for him. So I got it so cheaply. I'm going to try it here, even though I really could take it to Florida and make money on it. But I'm going to put it at, a, I think an estate sale price would have been a bit higher than I paid for it. So if I can flip it, I'll do it. The Yadro piece, I have to get glue and then that will be repaired. And yeah, we're starting to have some nice things come in. I like the scrolls. I think we're going to hang some paintings and prints and try to dress it up a bit. And our showcase actually filled with a whole bunch of waterproof glass. We're going to ask $5 per piece. The minimum I've seen any of these sell for are the little shot glasses, which we don't have, but they sold for $10 each plus shipping. If you broke them down individually, selling these things open stock is the way to go. Most of them have the etch mark. This one has the label as well. We have the little tiny cordial glasses, the napkin rests. This is all part of a well-appointed table, of course. These would be a good size for maybe a sherry or a port wine. These would have been a little bit smaller than a water glass. So probably something along the line of white wine. These would have been for champagne later. Originally, champagnes were served in sherbet size and shaped glasses so that you could get the effect of the bubbles in your face. But the bubbles would dissipate faster and people didn't like that. Candlesticks. These are nice little water glasses or maybe for a tall mixed drink. These would be nice for cocktails or port wine once again. So nice bar where younger people are so starting to use this again. They don't seem to be afraid of the lead because they rinse it, they pour the thing, they have their party, they pour it out and they put it away. They're not storing liquor in decanters anymore. That seems to be the big change. Okay, kids, so we're going to address the thing that lends to death piles where good merchandise sits around because maybe it got shopworn or maybe something happened to it. We're going to fix that Yadro piece so that someone can buy it and sell it and make money. Well, apparently we are not going to be able to fix it completely because this tube, which was ballyhooed by the client as having the pieces in it, only has one piece. So there is a missing piece. There are two broken cactus fronds. But let's go ahead and show you how to do this anyway. It'll be fast. Good old Elmer's Carpenter's Wood Glue. This is earthenware. This works really well with earthenware. If you make a mistake, it's water-soluble. White glue is as well, although it takes a long time to dry. You want to apply it sparingly, but if you make a mistake, again, you can get it off safely and fix it again. If you use super glue or Gorilla Glue and you mess it up, it's messed up forever. This wood glue is old and is kind of set. Is that a problem? Not necessarily to me because I just want a moist little dab of it. I do not want to put a lot on. So I took this little implement and got just enough on the back side to apply. And you can see I did a little already. I'm going to spread it a bit. Very, very little is necessary. And you don't necessarily have to put it on both sides either. It's fortunate this is a fairly upright piece. It had a very strange accident where a chandelier bulb fell on it. So it's fairly easy to hold in place in the right place while you get your painter's tape to hold it on. Now that we've tested that it's an even break, we can apply painter's tape on. We have the glue on. We'll set this piece on very cautiously again. I'm going to have to use two hands, but then we'll wrap it with the tape. This is also a time to decide whether you are really getting rid of stuff, and I am. I thought about fixing this guy. It would take a little bit to rewrap his head and then put the wig back on. I have decided not to do it. I'm going to sell it the way it is for $5. It is a nice 1930s era skookum and it will be worth fixing for somebody who wants to take 10 minutes and has a nice piece of old quilt fabric or some cotton to put around as a head wrap. Well, it's looking different and we're finding different stuff. My friend Penny came from the north end of the county and helped me for several hours unpack a whole bunch of stuff that has not been open for years. So we have unpacked the very last box.
That's not to say that we have it all set up, but we are getting a big, big jump on it at this point. Especially here, a whole lot of fun kitsch figures, 1950s Japanese in particular, elves and pixies and musical frogs, a bunch of 1960s era Joseph figurines. We'll show you another shelf of those. Look at all the spaghetti poodles. There's just a bunch. Charlotte Beach Redheads by Goebel on the right, and QBs from Japan in the middle. These little bugs are very similar to Beth Barton bugs, even though they're made in Japan, and Beth Barton's were Scandinavian. Hers are worth a bunch of money. The little knockoffs actually are worth a little bit, too. But we're only going to be selling these things for about $3 a piece. Yes, that is going to be the number. This is really cool. It's from the Toronto Canadian Exposition of 1935 and was done for Marguerite. Made in Japan. Nice little flower frog. There's definitely some things I would pick up for the prices that they're going to be in here. Prices are going to be low. Like I've been saying, uh, if you've been following this, we are definitely pricing it to go cheap. We definitely have found some more things that are cute and interesting. There are some things that were here last time. They are being marked down, down, down. I found a piece that looks like it's probably Potosi or one of the companies there in Italy. It's got a little bit of a glaze chip on the rim in the black part, which would be easily touched up, and it's going to be $3, folks. David Winter Cottages are going to be $3. The Music Box Gal Dancer is going to be $3. All these Andrea Birds are going to be $3. We will price the clocks and the lamps and some of those things a little bit higher. We do have our area back here where there will be a lot of $10 items and the lanterns there are going to be a little bit more. But a whole lot of this stuff is just going cheap. The microscope there, it is time to go. The centrifuge there, it is time to go. Ulysses S. Grant, it is time to go. And here are more Joseph figurine ladies and a bunch of Japanese cottage wear. And look at that cat. That is a toothbrush holder. That's why he has a notch in his back, 1930s. More handsome clocks, and then this neat baseball display. It's a reproduction, but it's cool looking, and I finally got it up where you could see it. A bunch of sign books there. I've got to work on the paper ephemera still. There's a lot of paper ephemera here that has not been out before. Toyland, everything on this table is going to be a dollar. Everything. It's just as simple as that. Found a bunch of Japanese cottage where it definitely looks good in the front of this old desk here. We've got the easel out. We have every box we can find down here in the corner. And then some more fun and kitschy things. A little bit of boudoir this time, not a whole lot. This bust pair here will probably be priced around 20 everything else in here again. Well, we're looking at the magic number three. We'll charge a little more for the Caronan purse, which has been restored. Pipkin and bonded, I guess it is. These little English hats that are recreations of the kind of hats that women wore in the 17 and 1800s in little gift boxes. They actually do sell online. They're going to be $3 each. Some smart eBayers should buy those with Christmas coming. Cute little mesh purse. You can hear the people leaving the ORV park outside. A bunch of very fun and varied porcelains here, Erte. Nice box of the Yale pattern. This is Noritake from the 1920s. I have uh, the friend who is helping me is one of the people involved with these online table decorating groups. And so she took some pictures to send to them and I hope they come because I do have a lot of that sort of thing. And a lot of it is going to be really inexpensive. I bagged all of the doilies, I bagged all of the aprons and we're going to put one price, you know, probably $5 on an entire bag full. We'll go past the case of Waterford here. We added a really cool yellow Weller ring pitcher from the 1930s and some cute salt and pepper shakers, some cute little honey pots. Getting all the little stuff in here is definitely making the display a little more interesting and active again. And you can see a row of fun 1950s salt and pepper shakers there. Some actual practical things for the few people who come to this sale looking for such things. And then we have a nice vignette over here. We were able to hang the two Japanese screens. The lamp is very pretty. The clock is very pretty. These are not $3 items, but they're not going to be expensive either. This set of Syracuse China, all of these Syracuse sets, in fact, the next few sets I'm going to show you have an interesting history. These are the sales manuals because 
the woman who these came from, this is her price book because she was selling for them in 1963 and 64. And so, in fact, she had sold for many, many years, as you see. And so she was able to look through and she ended up getting the minuet pattern on the Carolina shape as her dishes in that year. And the funny thing is you can take a look at the prices and see that a service for eight was $222. We will get nowhere near $222 for this service for eight and all the serving pieces. These really cool heron prints, they are gonna have to be priced at a fair price, but they are a good artist and we will price them, I think around two and a quarter a pair. We actually do have some Native American baskets in here, but again, all these baskets are going to be $3 this time, even the few that are left that are Papago. Some neat Native American looking stuff on this little desk here. The desk will probably be 15 or $20 and all the pieces on it, again, $3. This shelf here, and then this is another really pretty Syracuse set from the same woman. This is the rose pattern, June Rose. And you could actually get a pattern called Fostoria June at the same time that has the bow knot in it. But this is a very pretty and fairly complete set as well. Out front, well, I've got the porch cleared and ready for the folks from Cincinnati to put their stuff out. They are bringing some cool stuff. I think some of their things are better than mine. So I'm giving them the table section. We used a bunch of boxes and put a linen over them on both sides. I put my porch swing up there, and that can be a surface for them with a backing so they can lean some stuff. And then they have a hard table and some places to sit. So hopefully they told me the kinds of things they were bringing, and I really want to feature them. So being on the walkway to the front door is a pretty good feature, I think. And then here, shrouded under wraps, we have a big table and two rows of one dollar items we have what's left of the hubcaps that i've been selling the past few sales we have a little bit of patio furniture some extra boxes we'll show you more tomorrow